Out of This World Convention. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joseph Nagy. Out of This World Convention by Forrest James Ackerman. I was a spy for the FBI, the Fantasy Bureau of Investigation. Learning of a monster meeting of science fiction fen in New York, I teleported myself 3,000 miles from the Pacific coast to check the facts on the monsters. And it was true. The 14th World Sci-Fi Con was tremendous. In all seriousness, the New York Con was one of the greatest aggregations of sci-fi enthusiasts I've ever seen. A far cry from the Nikon, the first World Sci-Fi Con of 17 years before, when the turnout of 125 was considered colossal. Now, more than 1,200 fans, authors, editors, artists, publishers, agents, anthologists, reviewers, and readers of science fiction and fantasy registered for the Labor Day weekend. It was a gathering of the clans, a conclave of the slans. From 37 of the 48 states they came, and from Canada, Cuba, England, Germany, India, Israel, and the West Indies. The roll call of celebrities read like the who's who of sci-fi prodom. Theodore Sturgeon, Isaac Asimov, Fritz Lieber, Willie Lay, Nelson Bond, John W. Campbell Jr., L. Sprague de Camp, James Blish, Judith Merrill, Ted Carnell, editor of New Worlds, Kelly Frias, Edmund Hamilton, Leigh Brackett, Anthony Boucher, William Ten, James E. Gunn, Frank Belknap Long Jr., and numerous others, including guest of honor Arthur C. Clarke. A standing ovation was given Arthur Clarke before and after his speech at the banquet, a serious address that lasted 45 minutes and covered many philosophical facets of the sci-fi field. Especially rousing hands were given two of the real old-timers present, artist Frank R. Paul, guest of honor of the first convention, and, out of the ark, the man who once was an assistant to Thomas Alva Edison, the pioneer novelist of scientific romances and the man who discovered the golden atom, Ray Cummings. World-famous cartoonist Al Capp gave a hilarious speech at the banquet Sunday night, other large laughs being garnered on the occasion by Isaac Asimov and Anthony Boucher, Robert Bloch again proving that he has no peer as a master of ceremonies. The masquerade ball was filmed for televising. It was a sight for bugging eyes. Extraterrestrial glamour girls came in spectrumatic colors. One, Ruth Landis of Venus, formerly New York, was a verdant beauty, fresh as a breath of chlorophyll, while tall Tam Otison, a recent import from England, had the judges agreeing that just looking at her was an education. Olga Lay won for the most beautiful costume, and Joss Kristoff, a survivor from the first convention of them all, was another prize winner. Monsters, mutants, scientists, spacemen, aliens, and assorted things thronged the ballroom floor as the flash bulbs popped. John Campbell lectured on and demonstrated his controversial psionic Hieronymus machine, and famous fans sprang from Der, Wo Der Woodwork, out Sam Maskowitz, James Tarasi, Bob Tucker, Julius Unger, Raymond Van Houten, Alan Glasser, and on and on. David Kyle, E.E. E. Evans, James Tarasi, myself, and two others were elected directors of the World Science Fiction Society. No account of the New York Con could be complete without a deep bow of appreciation to the altruistic trio of committeemen, including one comely woman, who all but destroyed themselves engineering the convention, David A. Kyle, Ruth Landis, and Dick Ellington. By a vote of 3 to 1, London was selected as the site of the 15th con, to be held in 57. For an unforgettable experience in the fantastic universe of science fiction enthusiasts, plan now to attend the Lawn Con. End of Out of This World Convention by Forrest James Ackerman Recording by Joseph Nagy of josephnagy.com That's J-O-Z-E-F-N-A-G-Y dot com